Welcome back to this week's episode of Creating Magic. I'm Danny. And I'm Paula. And today we are here with Ryan. Hello. Uh, how are y'all doing? We're, We're so good. Excited how are to you? Have you here. I am so happy to be here. My favorite Potter Pals with a podcast. Oh my gosh, I love it. We love you. And we've met in person. That doesn't always happen where we're like, yes. the person we podcast with, we usually meet them like after the fact. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I was thinking about that and how like we met in person, but also like Danny, you and I hadn't really connected before Denver Leaky Con. But now like we're in the same like kind of stratosphere within Pottergram and I just love it so much. I want to say I did my homework this weekend and I love the pod. It's y'all, oh. y'all are just such such great people and such sweet hosts. It's amazing. Don't make me cry because I will cry. Mm, it's on my bingo <laughs> card, so deal with it. <laughs> Ryan, why don't you introduce yourself and give us a little background on you? Yeah, of course. I'm more than happy to. Um, my name is Ryan. Uh, my pronouns are they, them. Uh, I currently live in Washington, D.C., and um, I'm a Slytherin. Uh, what else should I add? What? And I'm here to talk about pins. Yeah. I, I don't know. Collecting pins. Pins, that is. <laughs> Who, me? Yeah, no. Yeah, I'll, I'm here to talk about the the fun shinies. Why don't you tell us how you got into pins? I yeah. I, I'm like, I'm an observer of the pin world. Yeah. Paula is a uh, claims to not collect pins in and out of the pin world. Yeah, I was actually wanting to also ask y'all, like, from like your perspectives, how do you view pins? But getting back to like how I got into it is, um, I first started like amalgamating pins that were like not fandom specific, um. And just like to decorate different like lapels of jackets or um, like of like suit jackets, um, collars of shirts. Okay, so my friends have started giving me like they them pronoun pens. And then I found the social media post that's like how to cancel JK Rowling, but still be like a Harry Potter fan. And part of that post was also to talk about rejecting licensed stuff or like how to not put money in jk rowling's pockets basically and i already like from like an aesthetic perspective don't really like registered merch because like i am in slytherin i am not in slytherin a registered trademark of the warner brothers corporation and i feel like they're like the the like their commitment to like putting that trademark and registration on every piece of um merch is just like it's such an eyesore to me um but like i found this post about like where you can shop to support like small creators and um, my friends Dylan Ross and Jeanette of Oddment and Tweak were on that list and I just kind of fell down the rabbit hole that way seeing what what was available like fandom wise and seeing that there's this whole world of of fandom uh creators and pin pin stuffs that um I got introduced to and that was like in 2021 like mid 2021 and it wasn't until probably latter half or not even latter half like like the last few months of 2021 that i found pop shop and i found like the osseo facebook group yes i say osseo because i am weird like that um that's how they said it in like the goblet of fire slash order of the phoenix like nintendo wii video games and that just stuck with me um but like it's like the osseo potter pins facebook group and then i found like the whole world of pinstagram as well paula how did you get into pins <laughs> yeah besides yeah and like what's... your paula collects hobbies and i'm going to just consider pins a hobby also yeah and also like paula from your perspective like what what do you think like potter pin collecting like what does it look like to you me What's it look like? I think it's different for everyone I think like when you first showed me yours I love that your stuff was like themed 
like you had like all your gold pins together and the green ones. And I was like, well, this is, this is nice. I was like, damn, they know what they're doing. So I, for me, I'm trying to think. I, I don't know how it happened, to be honest. I, I'm trying to think. My first pin pins were given to me. They were a gift. And oddly enough, it was given to me by Kim and Madi. And they gave me the same exact pin. Was it a Neville pin? It was Neville's trunk uh, by Sunset Road Co. So it was the same exact pin. And I was like, what? Like, I was like, man, I had no pins. And then I was like, you know, Neville stuff is not easy to to get. Like now, I think it's more, it's easier now. But before it wasn't, and I was like, oh, I could totally like just get Neville pins, you know, because I like Neville things. And I, well, I love Neville. So I was like, oh, I'll do this. But what happened was Pop Shop happened. And then I was going in there and it was like, I was buying stuff that had nothing to do with Neville and that like Amy had come up with that joke about like Neville adjacent well Neville ate a chocolate frog once like things like that so it <laughs> it just turned into and it got a little out of control just a little I think that is like kind of the like <laughs> And, and I'm going to say this as someone who, like, I have not been pen collecting as long as, like, other people have, like, Big Fat Lanyards, who you mentioned, um, JM Loves Pens, uh, uh, Night Phoenix Designs, like, people that have, like, been doing this for a while. I'm not anything like them. I also am, like, not going to come on this pod and, like, claim to be anything of, like, an expert in this. I'm just a fool who likes the shinies um but like it it is in my experience like when you start collecting there is this feeling of like it's kind of like a pokemon like gotta catch them all situation where you're like oh but they're so fun um so you like set rules for yourself and then you're like wait no i just broke the rules crap <laughs> and, like it it can it can happen yeah well, you find ways to make them fit into the rules like neville adjacent no, but I've been very good. You have been. I just want to say, look, these are like, I couldn't find the one I bought from Amanda, but these are like the last, they're still in the package. That's how, so this is Neville. Yeah. It's Neville. This one is Oddman and Tweak. That's, um, that's from Wondrous Wizard Weekend. Yes. That was a um, collab with Kimchi Creative, who was also at Denver Leaky Con. She yes. did the art for that. And then I got these little remember alls from Sophie at Nimbus Designs. Yeah, I have like I have all of them. And she's gonna be at Leaky Chicago. I'm so excited. And I got the bag. Yes, of course you got the bag. Yes, I'm gonna sell it with all of these because I have I have all of them. I so, love it. That's so lovely. But I've gotten better because for a while I stopped going to the pop shops only because I started to feel like oh like <laughs> it's weird it. It's like an addiction. It's a mind. It's a it's a it's a total yeah, it's like an addiction and also like I think like for some people, especially when it comes to like low LE pins, like pins that there aren't a lot of, if you get that pin on Pop Shop, it can be kind of like winning the slot machine. Oh. <laughs> but like and like I think people kind of get that thrill from it. Yeah. And but there are also people who don't like Pop Shop who I've talked to who it's like it's too much for them. Like it's overstimulating. Like it's Pop Shop, I think, needs to work a little bit to be like more friendly to our um neurodivergent Very friends. Diverse. Um, and also just like it can be really exhausting for people to like keep up with the comments and like the lightning bolts and everything. The lightning bolts. Well, my first interaction with you. Which now I feel like a big jerk about it. But at that point, people were like stealing my pictures, which never happened before. So, <laughs> so you had asked me for if if you could share a picture of this Neville pin that I have that's by Romo Pins. Yeah, Romo. It's, like, it's my favorite. It's, it's my a favorite good one. one. Um, and when you asked me, I was like, yeah, sure, no problem, as long as you credit me. And then when you were like sharing it as an ISO, I was like, oh, my God, I'm such a jerk. Like, not at all like was, you totally 
It totally makes sense. And like, especially if like, so I'm not someone like my pin presence on social media is very focused on my boards because like you talk to so part of it for me is like, I, I forget the name of the mad Ashley at mad something Mad one studio. Yeah. Mad one studio talked about like on the pod, like how it's very therapeutic to do things with your hands. And I think part of why I like pins is it's fun to like be like, oh, I have this um, pin of like Slughorn's Hourglass. Um, and I have this um, this other pin that is like chocolate frog shaped. And like I have this other pin that is I can't even like teacup shaped or whatever. And like, how do I fit those together in a way that like makes them look nice? And so my my social media presence and on my on my Pinstagram is very like focused on my boards. There are people who like they take amazing pictures of just like one off pens that are like huge grails. And like it makes sense why people are um like who want credit for their the pictures that they yeah. take? I don't. I don't fault you at all for that. At that point, I didn't know you, so I was yeah. like, "Which well, makes I was sense." Like, well, at least they asked because you know, like a lot of times I would find my and I was like, "What is you didn't even yeah. ask me?" Like and like I sent. Um, I had a friend. Trash. So I. <laughs> they are not trash. Well, compared don't to talk people. about my friends' pictures that way. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but like, no, like I sent someone a picture of um a, one of my other friends' pins because she was letting me borrow it for a potential trade, and now I see that picture that I sent like on all of these people's stories, and I'm like, okay, cool. I guess I opened Pandora's box. I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> Danny, what do you think about like pin collecting? I know you've said before you want to make a documentary about it, but like, what is your <laughs> like take on on the whole kit and caboodle? Um, I I know myself, and like, if I chose to get into something and collecting things, it can get out of hand. Um, so I choose not to. I do own pins, um, but they're very like specifically things I I like and I'm really drawn to. I love watching. The process of collecting. I joke with Amy all the time and I'm like, just watching your lives is like therapeutic for me. And I'm like that person where like if Amy says like, do I need this? I'm like, you don't need it. And then someone's like, should I buy this? I'm like, you should buy it. I remember... Sorry, go ahead. Everyone in the community just kind of accepts that as my role now in the lives. I love it. I love it so much. I will never forget, like, there was one time, uh, like, after Denver Leaky that you were in, like, one of Amy's lives and you were like, I'm just here for Ryan's sass and conjecture. Yes. And I was like, fair. Yes. Love it. I'm here for the commentary. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's, that's really what it is. And, like, there's some pins, like, and I try to, when, when I find something that I do really like, I, like, try to make sure I'm supporting my friends because I do want to support people's businesses. Mm-hmm. So, like, I recently bought the Akatar pin from Laser Brain Patchco. Mm-hmm. Was my plan to only buy that one? And this is where they get me. They're sneaky because they don't just do Potter. And then yeah. she throws up the little Lola pin. Yeah. My weakness is Star Wars droids. I was oh, making fun of adorable. Paula at Leaky. I think it was Orlando. We were at Sunset's booth. And, and yeah. we were, she was like, Paul buying lavender pin and I turn around and there was a Dio pin. I was like, oh. yeah. And and Nikki is like doing a whole series of like puff droids mm-hmm. or like she's doing some like more fan like less Potter based and like more fandom expansive puffs. She just did a Marge Simpson one that I'm like, yeah. that's so the cute. puffs I can tend to Duh. say no to. Yeah, um, but I do have like a mini Star Wars board. I have I don't have any Harry Potter. I have one Harry Potter Lego, but I have I have the mm-hmm. Billy bookcases. And I have the half yeah. cube and it has Lego droids in it. That's so lovely. So, oh my gosh, then, I love that. So like I got those two. I do have two of the Nifflers, but that's because I was at the panel. Right. Yeah. Like that's, yeah. I love that they did that for the community. And it like, was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and then the one thing, like I was in Disney the year the Disney pin started. So I have some from then. Mm-hmm. I that do have smart. some of those. I did give in recently. There's certain franchises that don't get a lot of love. Right, yeah. Some some of them are having a resurgence right now. 
But they had a Goofy movie pin. I love oh. the Goofy movie. It is one of my favorite movies. And like someone made a comment about like, oh, it's just because it's a resurgence. And my friend Aaron was like, yeah, no, that's not a thing with her. She's like the amount. She always jokes about how the amount of love I have for a Goofy movie. Every road trip I go on, it starts with the open road song. Yeah. Since I was a kid. Like, I'm like, no, I we have to that. play an open road. We're getting ready to leave. Guys. It's not happening until it's happening. Yeah, this is no, how it goes sense. or something's not going to happen, right? I love that. You have your process. And if we stray from the process, mm-hmm. I will perish. Yeah. Pretty no, that makes sense. sense. I will um, perish. I, I love watching it and learning about it. I love the creator side mm-hmm. of it. Truly, like, I have to commend these creators, man. Like, I don't get how people come up with such amazing art, such amazing, like, just technical structures. Or the ideas, for these like when they have like the spinning stuff, and I'm like pin on pin, like, like yeah, yeah, pin on pin. I'm mm-hmm. like, where and like I've How ended up that? in spaces where trading is taking part, and I'll just ask mm-hmm. people. Like Caitlin is one of them. Um, I did the string lit ink. I'm like, can I just flip through your book? Yeah, I like looking at the artwork. And yeah. like honestly, if pin makers sold their artwork as prints, that that's when I would have a problem. Cause like as you can see, there's a big gap that here we can ignore. But everything behind me, this is all like artwork that I've yeah. collected over the years. No, I totally get it. I was also like speaking of this, like, because I am currently working on a board. I just bought fabric for like something to go within my like wall that's like has a lot more of these like pinks and oranges and like kind of sunset tones um because like I do have small collection like I I think Paula you mentioned like I collect by color so I have like my black and gold board my blue board which my blue board is like also like nighttime cosmic kind of wiseacres themed um and then like i have my purple board i um, i'm working on a green board um but then like i have small collections of like orange pink and red um but like not anything to warrant making their own board so i was like oh i'll put it in my gallery wall um but then i was also thinking about like my gallery wall and how it's on zoom but like we're doing a podcast about pins which i think is really interesting to like have an auditory experience it like about something that is like really visual in nature yeah um but like yeah no the art for pen like if they yeah if if more people sold like prints um of their artwork i would be i um, I would be in trouble i'm like i have um let's see the not the big circle which is here these little Mm -hmm. circles those are all mini pin boards because i oh that's lovely i I like different shapes in my wall so i don't want just square and rectangle so i got embroidery hoops yeah Um, one of those is my jelly bean board and then i love that I have, I don't have embroidery hoops as, um, bo- like as pin boards, but like, a th- this is an embroidery hoop that I like sawed the inner circle on and turned it into like a washi tape holder. Oh, cool. So Ooh. I, um, yeah. Cause also a lot oh, of pin like makers washi sell washi. Tape. Oh, I love yeah. washi tape. Me too. You just, yeah, like I, I love just all of the shiny little fun, fun things. And also like shawashi tape is the thing that often gets included in pin mail. So when you are buying pins, like I know mm-hmm. you said you, you do your boards by color. Are is there themes that you like, or is it really just like if it fits in the current color plan you're working on? Yeah. So, I mean, like I have my color boards, but then I also like my original collection when I um, started out was like um, dark arts and, but not only within dark arts, it's like, uh, I try to keep a one-to-one ratio of like Lucius to Bella pins. So like, if I have like a Bellatrix mask, I need like a Lucius Death Eater mask to like balance it out. Um, and then I also do have like a, a collection of Neville pens. That's how Paula and I first first convened on the Pottergram. I guess other like rules that I put in place for myself because I'm not trying like I commend people who have like super big collections. Um, I am not trying to win pin collecting though. Like I'm not trying to catch them all. Um, so like I have kind of a rule for myself of like I don't 
collect face pins except in like specific circumstances because every role needs a good caveat because I'm in Slytherin <laughs> um like uh I stay away from face pins or like pins with faces on them shadows or silhouettes are fine but like no faces and then also um I don't really know how to put this other than like the tones need to be toning <laughs> and so like like my green collection is very like um, Rita Skeeter green, um, Slughorn's Hourglass. They're not really olive tones. And like, I do have some olive toned pins, um, but like, they're not, that's not on the green board. And like, my um, purple board is really like, it's lavenders and lilacs and like very vibrant purples. It's not really like your plums or your magentas, nothing too pink or nothing too blue. Um, and like, Sometimes that just is like a thing I have to see in person. <laughs> and so like I'll buy a pen and then I'm like, oh no, the tones aren't toning. <laughs> As one who wears exclusively earth tones. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. It's, the tones have to be toning. <laughs> yeah. It's not to yeah. do with totally tones, gonna be like, a thing now. Yeah. I'm gonna add to that much. to my daily, my daily vocabulary. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Tony. yeah and like yeah it's like um as i said like i have a really small collection of red pins but that's also because like the red pins that i like have to be red not oxblood not maroon can't can't lean too pink they have to be red you should totally uh, do a video of you like getting a pin and putting it next to it and you're like <laughs> <laughs> WikiCon oh, Chicago we? is going to be amazing. There I are know. so many pen right. folk who are going. Um, and like I wasn't at Orlando. Um, I was just at Denver, which was a small, which it sounds like it was like a lot smaller than Orlando for a number just, of reasons. I think it was the setup. Yeah. Like, I think I it think was it, just it had less people, but like more or slash not better, but a bitter variety of vendors. Yeah. yeah, it was like this weird, like, I preferred the Denver marketplace, mm -hmm. but the Orlando experience. Yeah. And Paula wasn't in the marketplace because she was poor. <laughs> like, I remember running into you every, like during the weekend and you would just be like, I can't do that. I'm poor. <laughs> I'm poor. <laughs> Sandwiches. Okay. Yeah. No, I totally respect it. Like, um, <laughs> but no, I, and I'm interested to see like what, LeakyCon Chicago is going to look like for me because like unlike y'all I'm not as much on the Potter gram so to speak um and also like I am more than happy to be like I, I jokingly say like coffee intern and like be running errands for people who are like out like doing the things doing the meetups making the reels um who are like at the booths being vendors your team um, which is all, which is a huge yeah. compliment. Yeah. My like I very like acts, like acts of service is very much like an important thing for me. That's like, I, I'm, I, but like, I'm very interested to see what LeakyCon Chicago looks like for me. It's going to have interested a variety. To see yeah. With like the changes and stuff, what, what it'll look like. I'm excited yeah. to see it. Um, Paul, I think I've now said it before. I'm a hobbit now. I love it that uh, if some if people start coming out with Pedro Pascal pins, I, it's over. oh oh <laughs> it is uh, over it is over. I would have to. I, I just have, have to quit Instagram. Um, no, no, no! Don't send them to me. Okay, <laughs> they have to. They have to find their way organically to me. By organically, do you mean I me sending them to you? <laughs> Post them That's in pretty your organic. story. It's not sending it yeah. directly, and she'll just flip through it, and she's like, oh. Yeah. Oh, what is what is this? Part of what I love about like pins is it's like it, it, this is kind of like a double edged sword. Is it's like um none of it really matters. Like it's not life or death, right? But at the same time, like it is a thing. Like the other side of it is it's a thing that people are investing their time and money and energy into. And like I'm not about to devalue my time money money or energy and i don't like it when other people do that so like there is that side of things but like to me like my my pen account like my stories are just like stream of consciousness because like 
we all need levity in our lives. I live in Washington, D.C. I lived at the time of January 6, 2021. I lived less than a mile away from the Capitol. Um, oh, God. And I like was having to like watch CNN and like watch the coverage of what was happening while I was like hearing sirens and like helicopters outside. Um, and in the and the weeks following that, um, the National Guard was in Washington, D.C. And um there's there's a reason I'm bringing this up. I'm not just trying to like lower the mood. I'm so sorry. But no, like it's okay. there is like but like the National Guard came into DC and like even to get to the nearest grocery store I had to pass by two fully armed National Guard like stop points. Um and so I just like I think part of the reason I got into pens is because I stopped leaving my house. <laughs> I was very like that was just kind of a moment for me of like okay like I'm gonna shut off the news like I don't really need to do anything super crazy like I'm just gonna like have some fun and fool around and that's really like what I um my space like within my my pin account is is like it's it's a place for levity um because like my day job and like all of our lives are filled with such like chaos like we don't really need like i let me have my like possum memes as a treat please <laughs> yeah. that's why i posted and and i'm big on like not apologizing for what you post as long as what you're posting is not hurtful yeah um like i never apologize for an absence or i just say like hey you know i have stuff going on but i don't like i don't believe in apologizing for things like that because I'm more than the account, right? I'm like a real person. I have real things that are happening to me every day. I have things that I fear I talked to you about it the other day, like, you know, raising kids and these things that are happening. And I don't know what mm -hmm. my kids future holds. And so like, I have like all this stuff that's like constantly in my brain. So right. when I'm sharing stuff, I'm sharing things that that I connect with or that I feel it's happening. <laughs> you might, you might get your free space. Um, uh, that, that I, that I think about all the time. Right. And it's, you know how it is that Instagram kind of knows like what you're feeling, what you're thinking. And sometimes yeah. you see something and you're like, how the hell do they know? You know? Yeah. So like you start sharing this stuff and I did have, I've only had it happen to me once. One person was like mentioned something when I told you like on Facebook I had somebody like that was like why do you even care mm -hmm. like your kids are not trans and I was like well I don't know they're yeah. seven and ten like I don't know but I don't want them to ever think that if they felt this way that they couldn't tell me mm -hmm. like, or that, that yeah or if they have friends that feel that way that it's okay to treat them like I mean, they're lesser my, than my sister's best friend yeah it's trans like yeah they, you know and they have just as much humanity as you do and yeah. i think yeah and i think part of like part of why my social media presence like within my pin account is the way it is is like in in part like because i just need a place to unwind but also because like i think i am the first they them that a lot of people have met and um, that's not something that I take lightly. Um, and I want to create a space where people feel like I am approachable um, and that they can ask me questions if so they need are. to. I love you so much. <laughs> I love you, you so much. I love both I of you so you. much. I was like, I was like oh yeah. my God. <laughs> it was amazing. Like, but like, I want to be like, and part, part of it is, is like my own anxieties about the way that I was raised and the environment that I was raised in is like, kind of have to kill to eat for respect. and um. So like I try like on pop shop and on like lives and, and in social media and in the pin space to be as like personable as possible, because I think like if, if it makes it a lot easier for like, if someone refers to like, and, and Amy has, I've talked to Amy about this, but like there have been times, like my name's Ryan first and foremost, like I've always been called he, him my entire life. Uh, and then Rianne. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's that there's Ryan versus Rianne. And then there's also just like people thinking I'm a guy, which is fine. Like, I don't, I don't have a relationship with gender, the gender binary. Um, but like, uh, uh, like, 
but like I've been called he, she, a lot of different things, but like it's easier, I think, whenever I'm being folksy and jokesy for people to understand that I'm not coming from a place of malice when I'm like, no, actually, like you meant to say they, like it's, it's they, they are claiming this pin. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that was a weird diatribe. I didn't know. It's, and it's just okay. like, this is so normal. Like, people like you that allow people to feel approachable. So, and like, the thing is, is also like, and, and I've talked to people about this is it's like, I walk through the world with my existence being the way it is. I was assigned female at birth. I have very feminine traits. And so people are going to call me ma'am and call me she as I walk through the world. And if I got mad at every person, every sales clerk or like food service person who called me she or ma'am, I wouldn't have any energy for the important things. It happens. I don't like to be called ma'am either, but it happens because I'm 46. But (laughs) (laughs) yes, in some cases, it's just pedantic. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, I have a question for you. How many how many pins do you have? Uh, do you know like I was thinking I was thinking I don't know okay so what are we considering pins because like there is also the community tree project um which is like uh lace brain patch co oddman and tweak um and sunset roco have made these like tree pins um that are magnetic um and then people can make either like can can diy or like design their own magnets for the trees yes yes um and so like oh, am i counting just the tree as as a pin or are we counting the, the magnets I okay think just the tree because when you add the magnets in my head that's more pin on pin and it's now one yeah. piece mm-hmm. um, i don't have a tree i have a metal stand for my laptop and it okay. just makes me happy to see this little niffler hanging from my metal laptop i also have a, yeah. I have a metal i have a metal stand to my little nimbus i bought this yeah. one by accident though it's a magnet it's not a pin oh so. <laughs> yeah i would say maybe t- keeping it safe like probably around 250 okay um that includes and and luckily like i say luckily like i love i love stina so much um she is just such a wonderful person and like her energy just shines through in everything she does but but luckily i am not a bean collector um i I leave the beans for other people like that's just even um that's a thing that i can't i can't get into and i'm kind of well, like I, I say that, but like I have a lot of beans. Like the ones that I find aesthetically pleasing, I will collect. Do you remember yeah. what your first Harry Potter themed pin was? Do I remember? Do I remember? Twenty uh, first night of September. No, but I oh, do I, have I, a I do have a pop shop record. <laughs> uh uh so pop which, shop is where you first purchased no no or? no like i um i purchased from like the websites so like i found oddman and sunset and laser brain and i like purchased from their websites um but then like all of their stuff happens on pop shop so i like downloaded the app and like and then your life was started over started seeing like what was going on um and that's kind of but like w- this wouldn't be my first potter pen but this would be my first like this would be as close of an estimate as i can get and also like when i first started following like people i wasn't on pinstagram yet and i was just buying like patches and like paper like notebooks um and other stuff as well um less less pen specific it was probably um it was probably the first pen that Stina ever made. Not Stina, sorry. It was probably the first pen that Nikki ever made, which is a silhouette of Hogwarts. It's a black and gold pen because I've at minimum stayed consistent with myself. Um, uh, that has, um, it's the silhouette of Hogwarts and it has a bunch of stars and moons on it. Um, that was probably like my first, I think I probably bought like a, um, like a skull, like a little skull that was supposed to go in like a Borgen and Burke's display or Borgen and Burke. I don't know if the shop is possessive or not. Display. I, mean, I say it wrong all the time. I heard, I was reading, what was I reading? This is like totally off topic, but I have to say it. Um, I was listening to a Harry Potter book and the way he said, 
Devrish, der, Dervish and Bangs? I, I thought it was mm. de, Dervish and Bangs. And it's like Dervish and Bangas. Bangies or something. Bangies. And I was like, what? I, I felt like the first time I heard Hermione out loud. Like, I was like, what is my life? <laughs> this is a lie. Paula, are you a shipper? Like, because I get. I get weird when people ship Luna and Neville. To me, it, so it was that, not. I wouldn't consider myself a shipper because I'm not like. She's just pro Neville oh, and pro Matthew Lewis. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I mean, I, I, I don't want to, I'm not a shipper, but I think they would be cute, but I know that they're not, you know? I just, you know, I think that we should, as for me, as as like an ally to straight people, I just think that like we should let straight people be friends. <laughs> but like, you know, what do I know? Um, feel free to include that in the podcast. I didn't, I didn't think about it that way. That I, listen, I'm like, all for it. I just like, I just, I think we should be able to see like to like a heterosexual guy and heterosexual girl just like beef. Friends. Paula has heard a lot about my yeah. current podcast track. Is um, it's very interesting. I'm listening to um Pod Meets World, which is oh, the okay. Boy Meets World rewatch with three yeah. actors, and they were talking about. And so, like, they had like interviewed the mom that was on the show, and they were talking about how like because it was an all male writing staff that were like in their 30s, they did not know how to write for any of the females on the show, and so. Betsy who played the mom they were like this could have been a great storyline for her but they just didn't know what to do with her beyond cooking in the kitchen she's a mom taking the kid like yeah the very stereotypical things and I was like it's yeah. very interesting to hear that side because like when I was a kid watching Boy Meets World you don't think about it no you don't so it's it's been interesting to hear like and like to actually like watch it because now I, I watched the episodes as the pot as they do the podcast episodes and yeah like, now I'm watching it like a 1993 television show with a critical eye yeah well i mean i think that's important to like go back and watch those things and like think think through them i, I yeah with a more critical lens i mean like that's how i absorb pop culture i think is like re re-examining yeah. things yeah well even for me i'm a like huge friends fan like love friends but even now like i watch stuff and i'm like oh <laughs> Like, oh no. Yeah. I I was never into friends. I think uh, it, I just I I've th- seen like, episodes just because they were on. Yeah, like yeah. I I think I know people who are like a few years older than me that love it, but like I just I don't think it was I, I think I just missed the cutoff for it, unfortunately. I was in the range um, and I just Yeah. Yeah. Didn't care. Yeah, for me it was like it was like everything, but like yeah. anything just like um what was it that i was watching the other day that i was like my god i never you know like and i feel like that shows growth right because i could, could just watch it and just it not make me feel anything mm-hmm. right like some people were like well that's just the way things were like yeah I, I feel like it's important to like watch something and like when you rewatch it if you still don't think that something that was cringe was cringe then there's something wrong with you mm-hmm. and that's Literally. like this, like this podcast they'll be like this was not a good situation like this is this is this is a yeah. cringy episode yeah i yeah i listen to a lot of um well i like i watch rupaul's drag race like i would say there are two main fandoms that like i could tell you everything about on their harry potter and rupaul's drag race um both of which are created by transphobes um to the tune where like after like some of the early seasons of drag race uh rupaul's drag race and its production company actually got sued for being transphobic and there's also like a few other things about like those early seasons that i like like you kind of have people showing up in blackface (laughs) and like there's like a lot of exploitation of like different like it's not like if we can't watch but like that doesn't also mean that i don't love rupaul's drag race and think that it launched the careers of like many queer people and like um 
black queer people and latinx queer people like it like two things can exist at once where like we love the thing but we can also can admit that like the thing needs to grow (laughs) i think like in with situations like that and like even like especially like with the harry potter fandom Mm -hmm. as long as we are not ignoring those things about it and that we stand for what is right Mm -hmm. and that all people deserve their voice to be Mm -hmm. heard and accepted that like sometimes you can still consume things but you need to be aware yeah i the implications yeah and i get real i mean like i've i saw something today where someone was like jk rowling needs to be involved in like a tv series in a more like in a role that's stronger than uh the role that it's currently in and if uh, warner brothers and hbo aren't willing to let her do that then they need to not do the project and it's like no one wants her on the project she is she like uh, like she is just a genuinely not good person like I can't see a situation where, like, anybody would feel comfortable with her in the room, like, being like, hey, here's what your character does. Like, um, especially when it comes to, like, Dean Thomas and Cho Chang and, like, Seamus Finnegan. And, like, mm-hmm. a lot of these, like, uh, the idea of her giving direction on that is so just, like, exhausting. But then also, like, Thank you. Thank you both for having me. This has been so fun. I just love both of y'all's energy and I cannot wait to see you in Chicago. I'm so excited for us all oh. to hang out in Chicago. So, Ryan, why yes. don't you share where we can find you on the socials? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, Whichever so ones my, you choose to share. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, no, uh, you can, my all of my accounts are private um, for capital R reasons, but like if you want to follow me, please feel free. Um, my uh, Instagram, you can find me at Ryan's Pin Diary. That's R Y A N N S dot Pin Diary. Um, and yeah, follow for possum memes and um, cynical nihilism. And also pins. <laughs> and pins. Paula, where can we find you? You can find me on TikTok and Instagram and Twitch at Unconceivable. She said, I'm a gamer. I'm a gamer. Now. What about it? What about it? <laughs> Danny, uh, where can we find you? Yeah. As always, you can find me at Mandrakes and Mischief on the gram, and you can find the podcast at Creating Magic Podcast. And until next time, keep creating. Now, this teacher's mind, I'm going to spend, so I'm going to come up with another clever idea to get us killed. What? Expelled.